I met my husband, Chris, almost 13 years ago, and we were married for 10 years. In the beginning, we were just friends since we were already in relationships with other people at that time. We kept in touch with each other over the years, and when I broke up with my boyfriend, Chris asked me out quite unexpectedly. Our first date went quite well and we started seeing each other more frequently. Looking back, our relationship has always been very chaotic and unhealthy from the very beginning. You see, he cheated on me multiple times throughout our relationship. The first incident occurred within a month of us being together. He went away to a hiking camp with his friends, something he does every year. While he was there, he was on some dating site and talked with a much younger girl where they exchanged inappropriate pictures with each other. I noticed a change in his behavior when he returned, so I asked him about it. He was evasive, so I decided to investigate. This is how I found out that he was cheating with this girl online and saw their messages. I confronted him immediately and he told me how his friends introduced him to the dating site. He tried to justify how it was just pictures, but I expressed that this was not acceptable to me. We had a conversation about our boundaries and in the end I decided not to blow it out of proportion since our relationship was just starting. The second instance was when I discovered that he had continued to maintain contact with his ex-girlfriend throughout the first four years of our relationship. She would sometimes reach out to him every time she broke up with a new guy and instead of blocking her or ignoring her, he would reply back to her and try to pacify her. When I confronted him about it, he justified this by claiming he was just giving her harmless advice so I should not be upset about that. He even went on to say how being friends with an ex is not a big deal. I was shocked to hear this and decided that it was time to talk to a therapist regarding these relationship issues that we were facing. Even though he was at first vehemently opposed to the idea, I convinced him to attend a few sessions with me. It turned out that our communication slowly started to improve and the relationship saw positive changes. We became even closer and closer and eventually decided to get married in an intimate setting. Every one of our close family and friends attended our happy day. During that time, our relationship felt really good and we were totally in love with each other. We enjoyed being together and felt content with our connection. We have always split bills from the very beginning, so even after our marriage, we continue to do so. My ex was struggling a bit with some life choices and what to do next in his life as he had dropped out of college years ago and had a low paying job. His family as well was going through a very difficult period with his parents splitting and his dad moving abroad for work. His relationship with his mother was not great either. He was unsure of his career path. I, on the other hand, was doing a degree at a very prominent college and a D1 varsity athlete, so I had my life all figured out. He did not like me talking about my studies, so I never brought this up, as I did not want to make him feel less about himself. Every day after college, I would go for my part-time job so I could pay my expenses around the house. Unfortunately, one day, out of nowhere, I started having some pain around my arm and my chest area during training and went in for a full body work just in case. It turns out that there was a tear in my arms which needed to have an operation. I remember sitting, feeling dejected, hearing this, thinking about how I was going to miss practice for a couple of weeks, but this wasn't even the worst news. My doctor checked my blood work and told me that there was some abnormality there. Upon close inspection, they found a tumor in my breast. It was cancerous, but it was stage two. I started crying and shaking hearing this and called Chris to come to the hospital. The doctor assured us that I was still going to be okay as they had caught it early on. The revelation of my cancer diagnosis marked the beginning 
of a tumultuous chapter in our lives. In the beginning, my husband was extremely supportive. He spent hours and hours researching my treatments and the best surgeons to debulk the tumor. We found a great surgeon in Pittsburgh, so we scheduled an appointment with him. Meeting this doctor wasn't easy, but this was the best decision of my life as he was quite experienced. He told me from the very beginning the risk of the surgery and that he may have to cut out some fat from my breast. My husband and I both didn't care as long as I was going to be okay. I went into surgery and the doctor spent 18 hours taking out the tumor from my breast. It was a successful surgery and I remember my husband crying into my arms in joy. Our happiness was short-lived as three weeks later during our weekly test, we found the cancer returning. I collapsed in shock because I thought that we had got it in control. My husband was proactive and spent countless hours with the doctor talking to him, coming up with a game plan for my recovery. The treatment journey was arduous, filled with the harsh realities of chemotherapy, surgery, and the emotional toll of facing mortality. The toxic substances coursing through my veins were difficult to live with. During treatments, my husband and I found solace in the simplicity of companionship. Through the nausea, the hair loss, and the moments of despair, he stood by my side, offering solace and unwavering support. Our bonds deepened as we navigated the uncharted waters of sickness together. The surgery to remove the tumor again was a pivotal moment. I was clearly informed by the doctor that this time they would have to remove my entire breast. I told my doctor that I had been thinking about it and that I wanted to remove both of my breasts. My husband and the doctor were shocked to hear this. My husband started to convince me that the tumor was only in my left breast, so I didn't have to remove my right, but I knew that I never wanted to go through this ever again in case the cancer spread to my right breast. As long as I had breasts, I knew that I would have to live with the fear that I might get this cancer back someday. And this terrified me. Obviously, I was angry and upset about it, but I knew that this was what I wanted. My husband was beyond upset, but this was not his decision to make. He tried to convince me several times before the surgery, but I stuck to my words. On the day I went in for surgery, my husband started to cry and begged me, saying that I didn't have to do this, but I told him that I needed to put myself first, so I was okay with my decision. Thankfully, the surgery went well. The prognosis, fortunately, was also optimistic, and as I emerged on the other side of treatment, I carried not only the scars of surgery, but also a renewed sense of self and an appreciation for the fragility of life. My parents, who had been dreading that there would be more bad news, finally had a chance to rejoice. I was officially cancer-free. Throughout this time, the only thing that had changed was my husband. He wouldn't look me in the eyes and could only speak in short words. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. It was like he had changed during the whole process and it left me feeling confused and hurt. He started picking fights with me for no apparent reason. It was like he had this wall up and no matter what I did, he wouldn't let me in. We used to be so close, especially during my treatment, but now it felt like he was pushing me away. I tried talking to him, asking what was going on, but he would just get defensive or avoid the conversation altogether. It hurt because I needed support, especially after everything I had been through. Instead, I found myself dealing with tension and arguments that I couldn't understand. I began to feel this growing distance between us and it made an already tough situation even harder to handle. I needed my husband to be there for me emotionally, but it seemed like he had checked out. The fights became a constant lingering cloud over what should have been a time of healing and rebuilding. I questioned whether the strain of my illness and the decisions I had made regarding the surgery had taken a toll on our relationship. Was he resentful or struggling with his own feelings? Amidst the physical and emotional recovery from surgery, I found myself grappling not only with the aftermath of cancer, but also with the strain 
on our relationship. It was a difficult time and I couldn't shake the feeling that something had fundamentally changed between us. One night, after he came home drunk, things took a turn for the worse. I could sense the tension in the air as soon as he walked through the door. I looked at him, concerned, and asked if he was okay. Instead of a reassuring response, he just started laughing. A bitter and mocking laughter that echoed through the room. It's not like you can do anything about it, he said, his words cutting through the air. I was taken aback, not understanding what had triggered such a harsh remark. I persisted, asking him what was wrong, hoping for an explanation that would shed light on the sudden animosity. He continued to laugh, the drunken haze apparent in his eyes. I kept urging him to tell me if something was troubling him, and he finally blurted out something that left me stunned. How can I be happy when I'm living with a man? He said. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. He went on to say he wanted a wife, but now he had a man, because I had decided to cut off my breasts. Tears streamed down my face as his hurtful words sank in. He continued saying he hated seeing me ever since the surgery, and he wasn't attracted to me anymore. Despite my tears, I tried to explain that I had no choice. Cancer is dangerous, and I didn't want to go through it again. I was lucky to come out of it alive, but I couldn't bear the thought of facing that kind of danger again. He yelled at me, saying that cutting off my breasts made me look more ugly. I kept crying, feeling the weight of his words crushing me. It was a painful realization that the person I had relied on for support during my battle with cancer now saw me in such a negative light. The scars on my body were not just physical, they were a reflection of the emotional wounds inflicted by someone I had thought would stand by me no matter what. That night was worse than the night I had found out that I had cancer. While my husband passed out on our sofa, I slept alone in our bed. Now that I knew my husband did not like me after my surgery, I was afraid that I would lose him forever. I couldn't sleep the entire night and kept tossing and turning in bed. It was only in the wee hours of the morning that my tired brain finally switched off. The morning after that painful confrontation was a blur of confusion and heartbreak. When I woke up, my first instinct was to find my husband, hoping that somehow the hurtful words exchanged the night before were just a terrible nightmare. I anxiously searched the house, calling his name, but he was nowhere to be found. Descending the stairs, I noticed an eerie silence in our home. The couch where we had passed out the night before was empty. Panic set in as I scoured every room, desperately hoping to see him and make sense of the emotional storm that had unfolded. That's when I noticed a sticky note on the fridge. My heart sank as I read the few words scrawled on that small piece of paper. I'm done with you. It felt like a punch to the gut. I tried to call him over and over, but there was no answer. His belongings were gone, his car was missing from the driveway, and it was as if he had vanished into thin air. In a state of shock, I reached out to his parents, hoping they could shed light on his abrupt disappearance. To my surprise... They were just as bewildered and shocked as I was. They had no idea where he was or what had transpired between us. It was a surreal moment of isolation, realizing that the person I had built my life around had vanished without a trace, leaving behind a void that seemed insurmountable. I called my parents and they rushed to be there for me. I told them about what had happened between me and my husband the night before. My dad was extremely angry hearing that my husband had called me a man. My mother, on the other hand, kept calling my husband and searching around the house for some clues. Fortunately, his parents arrived at the house as well. They had heard the panic in my voice and thought it best to check up on me. We were all really, really concerned. I could hardly function, and my mind kept going to the worst scenario. I can honestly say that the pain of that morning eclipsed even the darkest moments of my cancer diagnosis. 
The uncertainty and the suddenness of his departure left me grappling with a profound sense of loss, with no closure. We went to the station and filed a police complaint, but because he was an adult who had packed all his clothes and taken his car, it was pretty much clear that he had simply left me. When I returned home that night, it felt like entering a void. A space that once brimmed with shared laughter and warmth, now it echoed with the haunting silence of abandonment. Days turned into nights, and I found myself crying for hours on end, hoping against hope that he would walk back through the door, ready to apologize or explain. The house, once filled with the hum of our shared life, now felt desolate. I clung to the belief that maybe this was just a terrible misunderstanding and he would return to make things right. I called his number incessantly, my heart sinking with each unanswered call. It was as if he had vanished from my life, leaving behind an aching void that no amount of tears could fill. My parents, sensing the depth of my despair, decided to stay with me for a couple of days, but it was really difficult for my dad to go to his workplace as my house was pretty far from his sight. Hence, I tried to stay strong in front of my parents so they wouldn't have to worry about me anymore, and they eventually went back to their place. I was once again all alone and wandered around the house, too sad to do anything else. The days that followed were marked by a mixture of confusion, grief, and a profound longing for answers that seemed to elude me. I couldn't believe that my husband of 10 years had vanished from my life without any explanation. Eventually, I decided that I had enough. As much as I was grieving, I wanted to get back into training and started doing online college classes so I could graduate. There was a lot of therapy, crying, and mental breakdowns, but I knew that I had to keep going forward. I was asked out by a couple of men and tried to go on a few dates, but I just couldn't get my husband out of my mind. Since then, I have graduated with two degrees and have secured a great job. I have healed a lot through therapy and worked hard on myself to become better and stronger. I met Paul while we were working. He was a client of mine and I was never looking to date him, but throughout the time we worked together I could see that we both were attracted to each other. After our contact was done and he was no longer a client, Paul surprised me by asking me out. I was flattered and eventually tried to decline his invitation, saying that I wasn't looking to date anyone, but he insisted on us going out for a coffee at least. That one meeting with Paul turned out to be a turning point in my life. Over coffee, we talked about our pasts, our dreams and the challenges we had faced. It was refreshing to be around someone who listened without judgment and I felt a connection that I hadn't experienced in a long time. Slowly, Paul became a source of strength and support, helping me move beyond the pain of my past. We shared laughter, dreams and hardships. As our friendship blossomed into something more, I realized that there could potentially be a future with him. Paul's kindness, understanding and genuine care helped me rebuild my trust in love. With his encouragement, I continued therapy, addressing the lingering scars and insecurities. It wasn't an easy journey, but his unwavering support made it less daunting. I realized that I was slowly but surely falling in love with him. When I first came to this conclusion, I remember feeling so guilty about it that I called up my mother and started to cry to her. My mother comforted me, assuring me that seeking happiness was not wrong, especially considering my husband had been absent for so many years without any contact. Taking my mother's advice to heart, I decided it was time to face the reality of my marriage. I reached out to my husband's family who had always supported me and kept in touch with me. We had a tearful conversation where I explained my decision to divorce my missing husband. They understood that this step was necessary for my own well-being as they had witnessed the painful journey I had endured. I met with a lawyer to navigate the legal process of divorcing someone who had been absent for so long. The lawyer explained the concept of a default divorce a way to end a marriage when one party has essentially disappeared for years. It was a step closer towards 
closure, a necessary formality to officially and legally move on from this marriage. It took a bit of time, but eventually I was legally divorced from my husband. It was done and dusted, and I was confused about how I felt. On the one hand, I was legally single after so long, but on the other hand, I still felt guilty for divorcing my husband. Nevertheless, I decided to focus on my career and my relationship with Paul, who had been sweet and supportive to me throughout all this. Over the last one and a half years, we have grown closer and closer. Paul is unlike anyone I have ever known. He makes me laugh in a way that reaches deep into my soul. His love is unabashed and genuine, and he never hesitates to show the world how much he cares for me. I have found an unfiltered happiness with him that has made me forget the pains of my past. My parents, who had been through the highs and lows with me, adore him as well. In Paul, I have discovered a partner who embraces me for who I am, scars and all. So when Paul decided to propose to me three months ago, I was over the moon with joy. It was a beautiful moment, one that felt like the perfect culmination of the love and support we had built together. As he got down on one knee, my heart raced with excitement and the tears that welled up in my eyes were tears of happiness and gratitude. When I said yes, it felt like a declaration of not just love, but also of triumph over the challenges I had faced in the past. I couldn't wait to spend the rest of my life with Paul, the man who had brought light into my life. With the engagement ring sparkling on my finger, I couldn't contain my excitement. I immediately called my parents to share the wonderful news. Their joy mirrored mine and we celebrated the upcoming union with laughter and tears of happiness. Paul and I wasted no time in starting to plan our wedding. Excited about the prospect of building a life together, the venue, the guest list and the details of the ceremony became shared endeavors that strengthened our bond. Today is the day I'm about to get married to the man of my dreams. This is supposed to be a happy day here. I'm sitting in the washroom and crying as I type this. You see, the morning started pretty much normal. I spent the night at my parents' place as the bride and groom were not supposed to see each other before the wedding. Me, my mom and the rest of the bridesmaid squad got ready at the house and drove to the venue. While I was busy with photo shoots with my bridesmaid, I watched my ex-husband's mom enter the venue. She looked around and spotted me. I gave her a polite smile and she waved back. She then walked towards my mother and started whispering something to her. I watched both of them head to a corner, furiously whispering to each other. Ten minutes later, my mother approaches me in the middle of the photo shoot and tells me that she has something to tell me urgently. I looked at her and I knew something was wrong. I excused myself in front of everyone with the pretense that I needed to go to my room and get a touch up. My mother's face wore a solemn expression as she locked the door behind us. Immediately sensing something was amiss, I asked her if something had happened to Paul. My heart pounded with fear. She shook her head and with a grave expression, she motioned for me to sit down. Taking a deep breath, I settled into a chair, my eyes fixed on my mother. I felt a knot of anxiety forming in my stomach as she began to speak. She told me that very morning my ex-mother-in-law had received a call from my ex-husband, Chris. My eyes widened in shock as I struggled to comprehend the words she had uttered. My mother continued saying that apparently Chris was alive and well and he was currently living in Canada and had been concealing his whereabouts from everyone, including his parents. The revelation hit me like a physical blow. My mind had stopped functioning as I grappled with the shocking information. My mother told me that his parents were as blindsided as I was, having had no inkling of his relocation. Only his older sister had been privy to this secret as he maintained a close relationship with her. The reason Chris reached out to his parents was because he had found out that I was getting married and wanted to finally tell me the truth. He had apparently tried to call me several times, but my number has changed over the years. So then he tried to call my mother, who had left her phone back home. As a last attempt to reach me, he had called his parents and told them the truth. 
Understandably, his parents are furious at him for vanishing from everyone's lives without a trace or an explanation. His mother had begrudgingly approached my mother and told her the truth as she felt I needed to know everything before getting married just in case. Hearing the news, I felt a lot of emotions. Disbelief, anger and a strange sense of relief that my ex-husband was alive. My legs are trembling and I have since been crying while everyone is waiting for me so we can proceed with my wedding. I'm still confused as I'm writing this. I don't understand why Chris waited so long to tell me the truth. Why didn't he just divorce me and leave me like a normal person? All these questions are going on in my head when I should not even be thinking about my ex-husband on my wedding day. I would just like to know, AITA for getting married to another man on and not having tried harder to find my ex-husband? Update 1. Thank you everyone for your hundreds and hundreds of comments. I guess pretty much everyone agrees that I'm not the a-hole here, despite some of your speculations. I did go through with my marriage with Paul, obviously as I was completely in love with him, and no one can stand in our way. Paul knows by now about Chris reaching out, and he is as perplexed as me. When I was writing this post last week, I was feeling a lot of emotions. Hence, in the heat of the moment, I was a bit confused and wanted to know if I did something wrong. I understand now, with a clearer mind, after reading all your comments and talking to my family, that I don't have to spend another moment feeling guilty about Chris. I'm glad that I have moved on to a much healthier relationship with my now husband, Paul, and we are very happy. Update 2. It's been a month since my last update. I had not contacted Chris anyway, but out of nowhere he ended up sending me an email to me talking about why he left and trying to justify himself. This is what he wrote. I want to start by saying that I owe you a sincere apology for disappearing from your life without any explanation or closure. Over the past 10 years, I've grappled with my decision and its impact on you. I want you to know that it wasn't an easy choice to leave you. I couldn't accept who you had become after your surgery and I tried my best to stay. I never meant to hurt you and I have since regretted my decision, but I was too embarrassed to come back and beg for forgiveness. I sincerely hope that life has treated you well in all these years. You deserve nothing but happiness and I hope that you found it, especially in your second marriage. I understand if you harbour resentment or anger towards me. I would love the opportunity to talk further to provide the closure you rightfully deserve. Please feel free to respond when you're ready. I'm here and willing to listen. Wishing you peace and happiness, Chris. When I received Chris's email, a mix of emotions washed over me. I felt a sense of disbelief and anger at his audacity to reach out after so many years. Uncertain about how to process this unexpected communication, I decided to share it with Paul. We read the email together again, acknowledging that it was extremely odd for Chris to write this email to me, even though I have chosen to not engage with him. We both agreed that engaging with Chris would not serve any positive purpose in my life, so I did not reply back and simply blocked his email address. I have also talked to my parents about it, and they understand my stance. With this decision, I have found a renewed sense of closure from my past. Update 3. It's been five months since my last update, and life has been on a positive trajectory. Since blocking Chris, there's been no attempt at contact, allowing me to focus on the wonderful developments in my life. Recently, I discovered that I'm pregnant and I couldn't be happier to share this joyful news. I can't wait to be a mother and meet my baby soon. The anticipation of this moment has been a long time coming and Paul shares in the excitement. I wanted to share this happy update with everyone in case any of you were still looking for an update. The unexpected joy found in Paul's company has shown me that life has a way of surprising us with new beginnings, even when we least expect it and everyone deserves to find this kind of happiness one day. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.